wide. Hello everyone, I'm TG and today I'm here talking about the different objectives in Rainbow Six Extraction. What I want to do today is break down how each objective works, give you some tips to make them easier, tell you what operators to use for each, and what gear you're going to need to equip to get the job done. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to lead the charge in solo queue and get things done quickly and quietly most of the time. So in no particular order, let's just dive right in. So the goal of biopsy is to take down certain elite arcanes with your react blade. And in order to do so, you need to be in stealth or otherwise stun the arcane. If you end up killing the elite in any other way other than a takedown, it's going to fail the mission. And much like other objectives, it changes depending on how big your squad is. So if you're playing solo, you only need to kill one elite. And if you have a full squad of three, you're going to need to kill three. Overall, the best strategy I can give you to complete biopsy is to launch an XR drone and find all your targets before you begin. When it comes to operators, you're going to want to use somebody who can stun or incapacitate enemies. And on top of that, obviously Vigil's cloak is probably the best way to sneak up on elite targets. And at higher levels, he can even cloak the entire team if they stay close. But if stealth is no longer an option, Ella, Nomad, and Sledge can use their abilities to stun and Capitan can use his smoke bolts to regain the element of surprise. And finally, what's infinitely more important than the operator you choose is how you prepare for the mission. So the best way to prepare for biopsy is to make sure you and your team bring an XR drone and any of the react grenades, be it paralysis, stun, smoke, or impact. The goal of decontamination is to destroy special green apparent nests that pump out archaeons at an alarming rate, almost one after another. As soon as you destroy one nest, all the remaining become active simultaneously. This can quickly lead to the entire team going down if you aren't coordinated. An important thing to mention is that it's very, very important not to play defensively. The nests will not stop, so keep pushing. Like several objectives, decontamination differs depending on the size of your squad, ranging anywhere from 5 nests to destroying up to 15. So the best strategy to complete decontamination is to do so quickly. Anything that can take out nests fast and unmass is an asset. When it comes to operators, you want to use someone who can either distract enemies, destroy multiple targets, or set traps. Now, depending on the layout of the room, Fuse is arguably the most effective operator, as his cluster charges can often clear all the nests single-handedly. Hibana and Nomad can use their skills to set traps and explode multiple nests all at once. And of course, Pulse is very useful for tracking the apparent nests beforehand, nullifying the need for a drone. Finally, to prepare for decontamination, you may want to bring Arc Mines, which can destroy nests close together simultaneously, Frag grenades or nitro cells for area of effect explosions, and of course an XR drone if your team doesn't have a pulse. The goal of Hunt is to kill three Arcanes in order to summon an elite. Now, depending on the size of your squad, the three Arcanes can either be regular enemies if you're playing solo, or full blown elites themselves if you're in a full squad of three. Now, it's important to mention that there can sometimes be more than three targets on the map. And when the final elite spawns, it'll likely do so close to the last target enemy that you killed. And what spawns ranges from either an elite smasher, tormentor, apex, or protein when you're in a full squad of three, and any other enemy if you're playing solo. Now, the best way to complete hunt is to stick together and quietly take down enemies until the elite spawns. The absolute last thing you want is for the elite to attack when the map is full of active nests. When it comes to operators, most do adequately, but Vigil is again the one that shines because of his ability to take down enemies silently. Lion's also helpful because of his ability to scan moving enemies, and Sledge and Smoke are helpful for stunning and distracting enemies, respectively. And Fuse can be helpful when targeted enemies are locked in densely populated rooms. 
Finally, in order to prepare for hunt, it's important to bring paralysis, stun, smoke or impact grenades, and an XR drone for easy tracking. The goal of MIA Rescue is just that, rescuing an operator that's gone MIA. This means any operator that you've lost, you can recover if you complete your task. Now, you'll only be able to recover lost operators if the MIA Rescue takes place on the same map that you lost your operator. So to start things off, the ground all around the arc tree will be covered in sprawl. So when hunting for the tree, pay close attention to the areas covered in sprawl for no apparent reason. And when it comes time to rescue your operator, one member of the team will have to pull while the other members destroy anchor points. The number of anchor points and the rate at which they spawn and respawn is dictated by how many players are in your squad. When playing solo, there are three anchor points that respawn very slowly. And when you got a full squad, there can sometimes be up to eight that respawn quickly, meaning the team needs to act quickly, and sometimes the person pulling needs to stop and help destroy the anchor points. The best way to complete MIA Rescue is to divide and conquer the anchor points, and don't forget to clear the sprawl for easier movement. As far as operators go, Hibana is great for laying explosives with her skill and simultaneously destroying three to five anchor points. Jaeger is also an asset because his ADS destroys both the anchor points and the charges they shoot. And of course, Alibi, Gridlock, and Nomad are also pretty great for setting traps in case any Arcanes wander into the room during the mission. Finally, when it comes to preparation, the only gear that can really help you out is maybe the Arc Mine as a last resort to destroy charges, and of course the XR Drone to track down the Arch Tree. The goal of nest tracking is to use stealth to plant trackers on dormant nests, the amount of which are dictated by how many members are in your squad. Three when you're playing solo and five when you're in a full group of three. It may sound simple, but it's anything but. If too many nests are destroyed or awoken, you'll fail the mission, and there isn't much leeway. This is one mission where stealth is absolutely key. The only way to complete nest tracking is to play smart and play quiet. Bring your suppressors and your tactical grenades. Now when it comes to operators, it's no surprise Vigil shines again. His cloak is amazing for planting trackers because it doesn't break stealth whenever you do. Pulse can of course find all the nests you need, and Lion is helpful for marking moving enemies. Lastly, Sledge and Ella can come in handy in a pinch because they have an ability to stun enemies. Finally, in order to prepare for nest tracking, you're going to want either paralysis, stun, or smoke grenades for crowd control. And of course, yet again, you'll need the XR drone for tracking. The goal of rescue is to locate and extract a React Scientist found somewhere on the map. Typically, the Scientist is surrounded by a number of Arcanes that, once alerted, will attack them. And as expected, if the asset dies, you fail the mission. So this is yet another objective where stealth is key. Now, very similar to decontamination, it's best to try and target all enemies at once in order to minimize the risk of the asset dying. It's also a good idea to utilize stun or paralysis grenades in order to minimize the time Archaeons are active. Now once the room is clear, a member of the team must escort and extract the asset, similar to knocked out teammates. As far as operators go, again, Vigil shows his worth because amazingly, enabling his cloak and picking up the asset will not break stealth. It's entirely possible for Vigil to actually solo the entire mission this way. Fuse is another great choice because his cluster charge does not damage the asset he can actually clear the entire room from stealth. And the only thing to be careful of if you do this is if there's any bloaters or breachers in the room because their AoE upon death will hurt the asset. Next, Lion is again solid because of his ability to track moving enemies, and Smoke's PZ grenades can be used both offensively or defensively, protecting the asset from damage. Finally, I do want to mention Rook's ability and how important it is because at higher levels, it actually causes the asset to automatically be equipped with body armor, greatly reducing the damage that it takes. And lastly, in regards to preparation, all matter of grenades are helpful in controlling the room. And yet again, the XR drone is as valuable a device as ever because you can use it to gather all the intel you need. The goal of Sabotage is to defend Arc Spines from attack. 
Playing solo, you'll only need to defend one, but when playing with a full team, you'll need to defend two. Our spies are always quite close together, so your plan should be to barricade walls, windows, or doors in the vicinity in order to limit the avenues that Archaeons have to attack you from. Another thing to be aware of is that once the mission begins, the Arc Spines are going to continuously produce sprawl, so make sure you stay on top of that. Archaeons will begin to attack, and their priority switches from you to the Arc Spines, so you'll have to pay very close attention to their health. Arc Spines can be melted by Tormentors, Rooters, and Bloaters and Breachers. Preparation is what can turn Sabotage from one of the hardest objectives to one of the easiest, so make sure you lay your traps and take out any nearby nests. In regards to operators, Sabotage finally gives our Lord and Savior Tachanka a chance to shine. His turrets can be strategically placed by each arc spine for you and your team to shred any oncoming Archaeons. Any operator that can lay traps like Alibi, Gridlock, or Jaeger are invaluable as well, because any Archaeons that get by your defenses will be greeted with a nice track stinger or an ADS shot to the face. Another great addition to your team is the often underutilized smoke. His PZ grenades will not only damage our chaos, but they'll actually stop them from moving towards the arc spines as well. And finally, when preparing for sabotage, it's always a good idea to bring your paralysis, stun, smoke, impact, or frag grenades, but this is the only objective where I would say the glue grenade is very useful as well, because it can slow down the arc before they get to the arc spine. The goal of Serial Scan is very similar to Sabotage, but instead of defending the static arc spines, you'll need to defend three separate locations, one at a time. Once the team finds and activates the Catalyst Emitter, one of three large yellow squares will appear nearby. Once you step into them, the scanning will begin. The goal is to defend each point until the counter reaches 100% and then move on to the next. It's very, very important to mention that the counter will speed up the more people are in the square, so make sure your team sticks together when they can. Serial Scan is widely considered one of the least enjoyable objectives, but with proper preparation, it can actually be much easier than most people think. You'll basically just want to follow the same strategy as Sabotage. When selecting your operator, you'll find that the same ones that are useful in Sabotage are useful here. Tachyanka can set up his turrets in much the same way, and trap operators like Gridlock, Alibi, Jaeger and Smoke will be able to keep the Archaeons busy. One important difference however is that during a serial scan enemies will exclusively be attacking you as opposed to the arc spines in Sabotage. And finally like Sabotage when preparing for serial scan you'll want to bring all your grenades except for that glue and you might also want to bring along either a claymore or an arc mine just for a little bit of added defense. The goal of shutdown is to deliver foam canisters from the extraction point to the nutrient node. All nests on the map will continuously respawn when destroyed, until the nutrient node has been shut down. If any nests are alerted by Archaean Howls, they will stay alerted, even if they're destroyed and respawn. So this is another objective where stealth is key. Like many objectives, shutdown's difficulty scales with the size of your squad. Solo players having to bring only one foam canister to the nutrient node and a full squad having to bring three. If the team sticks together and is careful, all three players can bring the foam canisters together, but just remember that carrying a canister will force you to use your sidearm. However, you can still run. The best way to complete shutdown is to work as a team, find the most optimal path to the nutrient node, and move quietly. When it comes to operators, you may be surprised, but Vigil is yet again top choice. His cloak is invaluable, as similar to Rescue, he can enable the cloak and then pick up and deploy the foam canisters. And at higher levels, he can even cloak the entire team. Lion is useful again, because his scan will reveal any moving arcanes on the way to the nutrient node. And on higher difficulties, I would also suggest Rook, because his armor can come in really handy if you take any damage during the long nutrient node injection animation. Lastly, Alibi and Ella are great for setting up distractions and protecting your team from Archaean attacks respectively. In order to prep for shutdown, the XR drone is very important as you can find the safest and most efficient path 
from the extraction point to the nutrient node. You might also want to bring field walls or smoke grenades in order to secure your team at the nutrient node. Remember, you can drop the foam injector, use your items and skills, and then pick it back up again. The goal of Specimen is to lure an elite Arcan to the extraction pad without killing it, and using the trap to capture them. Depending on where the elite is located, Specimen's difficulty can vary wildly. Basically, what you want to do is clear a path from the extraction pad to the elite as best you can. Depending on what elite is the target, getting it to actually step on the pad might be easier said than done, with the rooters and tormentors being the most annoying. When the enemy does finally step on the pad, use the small keypad to enable a trap and cover them in foam. When it comes to operators, this is Alibi's time to shine. She can use an XR drone to carry her decoys across the map. When turning on a decoy while controlling the drone, Alibi can basically solo the mission and lure the elite to the extraction point without even taking a step. And remember, if things get too hot, just turn off the decoy, wait a few seconds, and try again. Lion's also a good choice of operator because he can see how dangerous the path to the elite may be, and Sledge, Nomad, and Ella can also be utilized for their stunning capabilities, keeping the team safe if things get too hot. Finally, when you're prepping for Specimen, the XR drone is key. Even if you aren't using Alibi, it's important to be able to keep the path between the Elite and the Extraction Point as clear of enemies as possible. You'll also want to bring some Paralysis, Stun, or Impact Grenades, just in case the Elite gets a little too close. The goal of Triangulation is to locate three seismic sensors on the map and activate them in order, A, B, and C, before the time runs out. The time which the team has to complete triangulation varies depending on how big the team is, ranging from a minute and a half while playing solo to 30 seconds in a full team of three. The best strategy is to track down all three seismic stations before beginning the mission, because interacting with station A will start the countdown. Once your team has found all three stations, it's beneficial to split up and activate them all simultaneously, if possible, because if you activate them one at a time, you'll have to run in between each of them. However, it is important to mention that if you do activate station A before finding B or C, it will automatically ping the remaining stations on the map. When choosing an operator, Vigil is again a great choice. He's able to sneak into densely populated rooms and activate seismic stations without even firing a shot. IQ, Lion, and Pulse are all great as well because of their abilities to scan and they allow you to control the map, with IQ actually able to find seismic stations with her scan. Lastly, Fuse can also come in handy because of his ability to clear entire rooms of enemies, if they happen to be guarding a station. Now when prepping for triangulation, again you'll want to bring your XR drone, but also your Paralysis, Stun, Smoke, or Impact Grenades in order to help you in case you need to activate a Seismic Station quickly and you're surrounded by enemies. Finally, we have Gateway, and the goal of Gateway is to find and enter the Singularity, then do battle with the Protein. First the team needs to find the Singularity, which is often heavily defended. And when doing so, make sure you conserve both your React Explosives and as much ammo as possible. Because when you enter the Singularity, you'll be greeted by one of three proteins. Alibi, Sledge, or Smoke. The Alibi protein is what I consider the hardest, as it will constantly run around the stage and generate clones, which can be both dangerous and confusing. However, killing the clones does damage the protein's life bar. The Sledge protein can also be quite difficult. It'll charge towards the team using its hammer, and it has two separate AoE attacks as well as a regular swing. It's best to try to stay as far away from this protein as possible. Once its health has been reduced to 50%, Sledge actually becomes immune to all damage from the front, which means you must attack it from the back, and that's where explosives come in handy. Lastly, the smoke protein isn't as difficult, but it can still be pretty dangerous. It wields a shotgun and it leaves a trail of toxic gas wherever it walks, as well as a huge cloud whenever it takes damage. And if you get caught in this gas, believe me, it does a lot of damage. Regardless of which protein you fight, 
all of them let out an AoE explosion after taking too much damage and teleport around the map. Also, at 50% health, they'll disappear and summon an arcane horde that the team needs to dispatch before the protein will reappear. When it comes to operators, Finca is one that immediately comes to mind. Her adrenaline surge is useful not only if a teammate goes down, but it also increases the entire team's reload speed and accuracy. Invaluable going against the protein. Alibi is also great for distracting the protein as it does go after her decoys and Nomad and Ella are great for stunning the protein to allow the team to attack without interruption. Lastly, Gridlock can also be useful as her track stingers both damage and slow down the protein. Finally, when you're preparing for gateway, it's important to bring your explosives, be it paralysis, stun, impact, or frags. The explosive harness is also very useful because your team will need all the explosives it can to take down the protein. So that was just a basic breakdown of all the objectives in the game currently. Who knows how many we'll see down the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you out just a little bit. And don't forget, if you guys love Rainbow Six Extraction, stick around the channel for more videos and guides down the road. And as always, I'm TG. If you like what you saw, you know what to do.